Coming up next, former light heavyweight champion Antonio Tarver takes on Danny Santiago for one of the many fringe alphabet soup titles, but the significance of this bout goes much deeper. Tarver clearly at a crossroads in his career. He is, you know, he believes that at age 39 he can still put together a very nice two-year run, which is the timetable he's laid out for himself, to get some title matches, have some very big wins, and he feels go undefeated for the rest of his career. Whether he can do that, it, the question is, can he stay concentrated on boxing? He has a lot of other endeavors, acting, a promotional company, even a nonprofit foundation. It takes a lot of time and effort from him. So if he's going to put that two-year run together, he's going have to really focus on the sport well whether you agree with Tarver or not the 39 year old future Hall of Famer always speaks his mind and Jim Gray caught up with him earlier tonight all right Steve thank you very much Antonio you're now 39 years of age how do you assess where you are in your career going forward well you know believe it or not I feel in my heart I'm getting better I, I think really I haven't even scratched the surface of uh, what my God-given talents is. So, you know, that's what we're focusing on tonight and beyond is just, you know, getting the most out of my talents and, and just letting it shine. Uh, you know, everybody know that I have a world of experience and have done some great things inside the ring. But I just think that uh, what I'll be remembered for has yet to come. Wow, that's an interesting assessment. How would you then say you have fared in your last couple of fights? Well, you know, it's been a process. You know, one fight, uh, for whatever reason, you know, I came up short. Uh, it was a big night, and, uh, you know, we wish we could have that night over again. But, you know, that's water on the bridge. And my last fight, you know, with all being uh, considered, uh, I think I did pretty well. I let my hands go. I threw a lot of punches. I felt I was busy. I uh, dictated and con controlled most of the fight. A lot of people thought I should have stopped them inside the distance. But, you know, uh, I was there for the work. I got the work in, and then we went right back to the drawing board. So now you'll see uh, a more complete, polished fighter tonight. And like Elver Mariki, Santiago tonight really isn't on the type of level that you've been on uh, in the same type of classes. Does it make it more difficult to prepare for somebody like that? Yes, because, you know, they're, all, they're uh, always critics. And, you know, I hear them loud and clear. So, you know, uh, but, you know, I got to be deaf to that and just go out and get my work done. You know what I mean? And uh, let the fight uh, take its uh, course. You know, all this stuff is not predetermined. You can't just say what's going to happen in a fight. That's why we fight the fight. That's why boxing is the most intriguing sport in the world. Have the critics bothered you? Are you are you hearing that, and is it getting to you? They never bother me, but they have helped me. Uh, I never allow my critics to get the best of me. You know, I use it all as uh, positive motivation, and we push forward. I mean, uh, as long as there be critics, I'll have something to work for. All right. We look forward to talking to you after the fight, Antonio. Thank you. All right. Back out to you, Steve. Well, Tarver feels that his ultra-tactical and defensive style is misunderstood, particularly by boxing judges. That's Tarver's take out. What's yours, and are we in for more of the same tonight? Yeah, you know, seven of the last eight fights that uh, Antonio Tarver has been involved in, he has uh, gone the distance with it. And when you do that, you're kind of inviting some erratic scoring, uh, like in his last fight against Elvin Enrique, one of the judges scored a draw. Many, including me, felt that was not appropriate. Antonio Tarver shows us brilliant offense in spurts. He does the same things over and over again and then dares opponents to stop him, which very few opponents do. The Tarver jab starts off combinations up the middle. That's important tonight. When Tarver bends in, he invites trouble. Fighting tall is a big key for him. Santiago was vulnerable to Zolt Erdai's left hook. Tarver has a good left hand. Now, Santiago will throw rights like Elvin Mariki did here against Tarver. If they end up being off the mark or short, look for Tarver to counter with his left. Tarver can also use this punch following a jab. Santiago has a habit of dropping his right hand, and if he does, the Tarver left will be there. Danny has a good double left hook, always a good strategy against the left. To win, he must land some overhand rights. That's his best punch, and the one Tarver can be hit with. Bronx-born Florida resident Danny Santiago, who has pretty much labored in obscurity for the better part of 10 years, 
That's not to say he hasn't had his moments like the time he stopped Elver Maricki in four. Interestingly, now he's inspired by Maricki, who just lost a majority decision to Antonio Tarver. This music sounds very familiar. Doesn't it sound like Larry Holmes' music? He used to come <laughs> yeah, into this. I think so. Santiago has been chasing his fellow Floridian since he was 17. That's about half of his life, I'd say. But Tarver was always on a different uh, plateau. And tonight, uh, the personable Danny Santiago finds himself in a potentially life-changing scenario. But it is a long shot, Alex. That's for sure. But, you know, underscoring the importance of this and what he feels about it, they had four weeks to prepare for this match, and their effort was to pack nine weeks of training into those four weeks. They want to make the most of the chances, and he and Pat Burns, they're with him coming in. They packed nine weeks, they say, into four weeks of training in the best shape of his life. And the reason Barber's original opponent, Danny Green, decided to fight for a world title instead versus Stipe Drew. Santiago uh, comes out with First world title try dropped two times in an eighth round TKO loss to Zolt Erde. Some final uh, checking there from referee Steve Smoger. And Danny Santiago is ready to go. Southpaw Antonio Tarver, the magic man, returning to the scene where he won his first world title belts over Montel Griffin in 03. A roster of world champion victims that includes Roy Jones Jr., Glenn Johnson, Reggie Johnson. No questioning his past achievements, but he comes off the uneven win over the relatively unproven Maricki after the lopsided loss a year earlier to 41-year-old Bernard Hopkins. Tarver has blamed just about everyone from the media to the ringside judges for his latest performances. He is now on a mission to silence his critics, Al, and prove the best is yet to come. You know, there are two Antonio Tarvers. We saw the one with Jim Gray, the one that we see at the meetings, articulate and really um, a, a fighter who uh, understands what he needs to do in the ring and can uh, articulate it very well. And then there's the public Antonio Tarver, who uh, is maybe a little over the top, creates confrontation with the media and others, and that Antonio Tarver is the one that maybe some, uh, more often people see. Well, if Tarver wins, he could meet the winner of the upcoming Jeff Lacey, Peter Manfredo Jr. fight. Chad Dawson, the talented young WBC champ, could fight Glenn Johnson. And uh, that would set up an interesting light heavyweight tournament. So Tarver's in the ring and set for tonight's fight. Let's go to the numbers as we check out the tail of the tape from Foxwoods. Tarver turned 39 last month. Santiago, five years younger, but a five-inch height advantage for Tarver. Trainer Pat Burns, who you alluded to, uh, Al, wouldn't allow us to measure Santiago's reach, feeling it would give something away. And at yesterday's weigh-in, Tarver 175. Santiago, who has had weight issues in the past, looked in good shape at 174. And a look at the key unified rules. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four rounds, they go to the scorecards. And if a punch causes a cut and the injured fighter can't continue, he loses by TKO. So here at Foxwoods Resort Casino in Mashantucket, Connecticut, we're getting ready for Antonio Tarver versus Danny Santiago. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Welcome to Foxwoods Resort and Casino here in Mashantucket, Connecticut for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions in association with Foxwoods and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the International Boxing Organization, the President Ed Levine, Supervisor Frank Brunette, along with the Mashantucket Pequot Athletic Commission. The chairman is Richard Butler, Executive Director Joe Latillier, and the commissioner is Peter Timothy. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Michael Schwartz, Dr. Kevin McGuire, and Dr. Tony Alessi. Timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, Phyllis Roy and Roland Roy. Introducing our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside, from Avon, Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. From Boca Raton, Florida, Mark Streisand. And from Coral Springs, Florida, Peter Tremetera. At this time, we introduce to you our third man in the ring, our referee in charge of this bout, Steve Smoker. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBO Light Heavyweight Championship. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Foxwoods, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with silver trim. He is fighting out of Ocala, Florida, by way of the Bronx in New York. He weighed in at 174 pounds with a record of 29 wins, three losses and one draw. He has 19 wins coming by way of knockout tonight. He is making his second attempt at the light heavyweight crown. Please welcome a fighter known as the Bronx Bomber, introducing Danny Santiago. And his opponent across the ring, the defending champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with silver trim. He is fighting out of Tampa, Florida, by way of his home of Orlando, Florida. He weighed in at the light heavyweight limit of 175 pounds with a record of 25 wins, four losses. He has 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former WBA, WBC, and IBF light heavyweight world champion and the current IBO light heavyweight champion known as the Magic Man, Antonio. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. Steve Smoker is our referee in charge. Thank you, Jimmy. Gentlemen, this is for the IBO Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Please obey my commands, respect the bell, and above all, protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, touch up. God bless. Well, the question is, will we see a fast, quick, more lively Antonio Tarver as he promised? And will he take this out of the judges' hands? He needs an emphatic victory. But be mindful, he's fighting an unranked, relatively untested Danny Santiago, who's never been in there with a guy like Tarver, even what some consider a faded former champion. Here we go, Tarver. The southpaw, the red, and immediately coming out looking to throw bombs is Santiago. Santiago has a good power right, but is sometimes wide, inviting the counter left. And Tarver's KO punch is the booming left. The punch that crushed Roy Jones in their rematch. I'm a little surprised Tarver would want to just languish on the inside with him this early in the match when from the outside the jab and the straight left hand would presumably controlled the shorter Santiago. Yeah, to get to Tarver, stay you got to get up, inside, rough him up. up as Hopkins did. Fighting outside versus Tarver is asking for trouble if you're Santiago. Nice left hand, though, a moment ago by Tarver. And of course, that's the punch Santiago is vulnerable to. Historically, Tarver, a cautious starter. Danny, stay up, Danny. Stay up, okay. Danny. All right, you all right, Tonio? At his best, the big, tall southpaw, a skillful, sharp-punching guy who can lead or counter. He hits hard with both hands, precise long left and left uppercut, and uses his right hand very well for a lefty. 
Santiago, you see him trying to lunge in and land that overhand right. That's the one punch you want to try and use against Tarver if you can get in position to throw it. Ricky was able to land some, and uh, certainly Bernard Hopkins did in uh, his fight with Tarver. Santiago on the outside now. That's not where he wants to be. Exactly. Santiago's trainer, Pat Burns, an ex-Marine and former Miami policeman, had Tarver the amateurs, and he, he thinks he's very beatable. Some feel Tarver is one-dimensional, jab, straight left, but uh, Al, as you pointed out numerous times, it works. Well, Pat Burns was the uh, co-coach in the Olympics, along with Al Mitchell, who previously worked uh, with Forrest. Uh, in 1996 and it was a contentious time for Tarver he ended up winning the bronze medal uh, losing to Vasily Giroff and many people feeling like he didn't apply himself enough at those Olympics he was the top amateur in the world and it was a surprise that he didn't win the gold medal and Burns was down there and I guess he feels from that experience he knows what to do against Antonio Tarver Tarver feels that his style is misinterpreted by a lot of people, particularly the judges. He's penalized because of his defensive prowess, makes people miss. He's tactical to a fault in the eyes of the judges, he thinks. And just because uh, your back is on the ropes, he says, it doesn't mean you're not being effective. He said it, it doesn't look like he's working hard. So maybe he has to start grunting and making sounds <laughs> and faces. A little right hand in there by Santiago at the end of that round. That was a close round. Now let's get it over to Jim Gray with Chad Dawson. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Chad, uh, a lot of people are wondering when it's going to be you and Chad Dawson getting it on. Oh, uh, you mean me and Tarver? Uh, Tarver, I'm sorry, you and Antonio Tarver. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm tired of waiting, you know, I'm, I'm, ready, for, I'm ready for a big fight, you know what I mean? It was with Tarver, you know, anybody, you know, but, but the Tarver fight is definitely a fight that I want. Is money the issue here? Did you want too much? Did he want too much? Why couldn't you get together? I mean, I, I never got a home. I, I mean, we never even got it past the signing contract or nothing like that, so, I mean, the money is definitely not the issue, man. Is he afraid of you? I mean, I'm not going to say. I don't think any, any fighter is afraid of anybody, but, I mean, it's time to step up to the plate, you know? You'll fight in April. Will that be against Glenn Johnson? Uh... So I heard, about, I heard, I heard, it could be, you know, the rumors, but um, I mean, Glenn Johnson, Antonio Tarver, it doesn't matter, you know, as long as Bad Chad comes in the ring and, and prepared and, and, and does his job. Chad, thanks for joining us. Steve Albert would like to wear your coat. Is that all right? <laughs> sure, man. It, it fits. <laughs> <laughs> He'll make it fit. Nice to see you, Chad. We'll see you in April. Steve? Thank you. <laughs> I might just trade the headsets that I'm wearing for that coat. That would keep me a lot warmer outside here in the uh, Foxwoods area. You're, you're Thank you, Jim. Negotiator. Yeah. Well, Chad Dawson from nearby New Haven, the undefeated WBC light heavyweight uh, champ. Is he studying a future opponent tonight, Antonio Tarver? Time will tell. You know, they had good sparring. Uh, Prince Badi Adamu, uh, who fought Roy Jones Jr., and is a, a pretty good light heavyweight, sparred with uh, Tarver for this fight, and he would be a very good uh, fighter to simulate what Santiago would do. Feeling from Dawson's camp, Tarver not very eager to get in there with uh, the young southpaw, Mr. Dawson. But if Tarver really wants to show he's the best, Al, pretty good chance it will go through bad chat. Well, I'm sure Tarver wants to challenge for one of the major light heavyweight titles. Good left hand by Tarver. It, he would presumably have a date with Jeff Lacey if Jeff Lacey beats uh, Manfredo in the, the next fight uh, and then looked for a shot at a light heavyweight title, maybe against Austin. A Tarver-Hopkins rematch not likely with uh, Joe Calzaghe targeting Hopkins. That could be Hopkins' last fight. All right, round two, midway. But right now, uh, Tarver has to dispatch Santiago. And, and he's got to do it. Uh, most people think in, in, I can't put it any other way, electrifying fashion to, to, to start winning people back. Um, and, and right now, it's, it's kind of a... Uh, a slow Andrew start. Lose. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, out, I, I, I'm out. one of those people that thought the Mariki fight showed that he, for a lot of their layoff, I thought there was enough sharpness there for me to feel okay about Antonio Tarver. Now, if this is a laboring performance against Santiago, another journeyman kind of light heavyweight, clearly it's not going to bode well for him from a marketing standpoint. But he's controlling already. We see him controlling round two here for the most part. 
But we live in an instant gratification society, which is sometimes not so good. And uh, people want action. I mean, they want knockouts, especially at the higher weight classes. And, you know, even though this is a very talented man here in the red trunks, there's no question about it. They, they want to see fireworks. Yeah, see, I my theory about him is, though, he's been involved in a lot of great fights with Glenn Johnson and even the Jones fight, even the last Mariki fight was kind of interesting. So uh, I think it's about him showing a lot of skill and at least creating, as you say, interesting fights. Jimmy Williams, 80 years young, couldn't have said it more <laughs> succinctly. He agrees with you. He wants Tarver to go after him and get Absolutely. Danny Santiago out of there. Well, let's see if Tarver heeds Jimmy's advice. You know, Antonio Tarver, you just saw a combination. He fights, I mentioned it before, brilliantly in spurts. And that is part of the issue, I guess. Then he'll have a little period in the round where he does it, and then he'll do it again. And it's, you know, for the most part, it's a one-dimensional attack, but it's an attack, you, it's hard for people to stop. He's got the jab, the straight left hand, occasionally mixes in a hook, not very often. There's the left. And then Santiago taking Tarver back. Now Danny Santiago, to make it all work here tonight, he's got to do two things. He's got to, there's the left hook. He's got to throw that hook to the body, double with it to the head if he can, and then try and throw that overhand right and land it with effectiveness. To me right now, Tarver's looking tentative. I, I, I don't see it. I mean, this is, this is, you know, it's not Sugar Ray Robinson in front of him. <laughs> A nice right hand by Santiago. In all due respect to Santiago, yeah, I and, and, and Tarver is missing wildly. Yeah, Tarver's accuracy not as good as it was in the last fight, interestingly enough. Missing again, twice. And those are pity patty shots. There's not a lot behind it. He's got to straighten those out and put more uh, power into it, more sting. I mean, and he has it, or he had it. I'm not sure. Stay up, Danny. Stay up, Danny. Now there's Santiago. Good work. Good work in the inside by Santiago. That's where he wants to be. Yep. As close as he can get to Tarver so he can rip those body shots and then rip the double left hook. This was a guy who literally jumped for joy when he found out he was uh, going to get this fight with Tarver. He was in the gym, but not training for anyone in particular. He had come off a difficult situation, coming in over 30 pounds overweight for season three of the TV show, The Contender, telling us the problem was due to a medical condition, which was discovered actually, according to him, saved his life. But as Danny put it, one door closes, another opens. Nice jab by Tarver. He's starting to set down. I think he hurt Santiago with yeah. that left hand. Tarver's starting to come on here a little bit towards the end of round three, and Santiago's in trouble. There's the straight left by Tarver. That's his money punch, and Santiago's feeling the power of that punch. And there's a good body shot by Tarver. All, all Tarver has to do, really, is come forward and apply himself and, and let some of those punches go like that. Those fell short, but starting to uh, have a little more effect here on the unheralded Danny Santiago.
Listen, you're not going to get opportunities like this. You had three or four opportunities here, and you, and you, you let it go. Oh, you're right moving, you're, yeah, man, right hand and left hook. You slipped beautiful. You had his head here. You didn't bring anything. You're moving your upper body. When you stop moving, you're getting caught. You understand? He caught you with a good left hand because you stopped moving that head. Mm -hmm. Okay? What do we want here? That little minnows are Mike Tyson shit, right? Isn't that what we want? That good upper body movement and punching off that. All right? You let it? Pat Burns with good advice to Santiago. Santiago working on the inside, trying to work the body, and there's the nice right to the body and right uppercut. Interestingly, they mentioned Mike Tyson. That's a combination Tyson kind of created. Now, later in the round, Tarver with some very good straight left hands. That was a point where he hurt Santiago, simply made him feel the left hand in a round in which Tarver won it because he was more aggressive in the last half. And he uh, has been known to uh, steal a round or two. Uh, Antonio Tarver, he'll coast for a while and then uh, pick it up towards the end of the round, just as he did there in round three. Tarver did stun Santiago a couple of times in the third. But back comes Santiago on the inside, digging to the body, which is what you're supposed to do against Tarver. Well, they want the movement as he comes in, and they called it the Tyson-like movement. But at the same time, he's very hittable, and he, you know, he's got to... It's also got to be... Uh, aware of his defense when he comes in like that against Tarver. Right, and that's why they want the upper body movements. He's dipping down, but the problem is, of course, he's still getting hit by yeah. Tarver as he comes in. That was the reference to the Tyson stuff. And his prime was so good at that. Santiago's not applying a lot of pressure to Antonio Tarver. I think that's one thing. If you're going to try and beat this, you know, light heavyweight icon and you're going to get in and win that decision you, you want to be aggressive these these punches are, are just falling short that one did but that was blocked by uh, santiago but again tarver fighting in uh, as you put it spurts from his last fight landing a fair amount of punches here in this round even though he's missing a lot some of those left hands are getting in and santiago just nailed him with a left hook and a straight right by Santiago. There's not a lot of steam behind those punches. Those rights by Santiago, that's the punch he wants to get in, if at all possible. And it's the one you can't land against Antonio Tarver. Yeah, he, he loads up with his right like he did just there, and he just telegraphed it to the body. He's got to use his left more, uh, Santiago. He's got to mix it up a little more. And he, he throws that right hand looping from time to time, and that's where Tarver could really take advantage and fire the countering straight left, which is his big money punch. Good body work uh, a moment ago. There's Tarver again. He's really committing to the body now, throwing a lot of straight left hands down there. Under a minute remaining, round four, scheduled for 12. Santiago game, trying to make it competitive. There's the overhand right by Santiago. That was the best one he's thrown, I think, in the fight, really. Santiago has 19 knockouts among his 29 wins, but he's hurt now. He's hurt. And he goes through the ropes. It's a knockdown. Five, six, seven. Hey, how you feel there? How you feel there? Yeah? Feel good? Yeah? Come on, come on. Santiago hangs tough. Uh, Tarver goes right back to work. Body shots being very effective. A barrage of shots. Knockdown number two. That's it's it. over. Steve That's Smoger it. calls it. it off. No more, no more. No so more. Antonio Tarver okay. Okay. with two knockdowns here in round That's four. It. The second one is the end. And uh, Tarver Finish. makes it uh, pretty short work. Of Danny Santiago again, you know, kind of choppy at times, but he finished it off the way he wanted to finish it off with a knockout. Given the fact that seven of his last eight have not ended in knockouts, for Tarver certainly wanted to stop it. We heard Jimmy Williams urge him to get it, so his power showed up here in this round. So Antonio Tarver uh, beats uh, Danny Santiago, which is exactly what he was supposed to do. A loss would have been unthinkable. He's 39, time running out. He needs the big fights now from this point on. We'll see Danny Santiago go down uh, for the first time in this round. He would end up going down twice. 
the uppercut is what really started the problem, and then the straight left hands by Tarver. Tarver does what he does. He just, he throws the jab, he throws the left hand to the body and the head. Keeps winging away and ultimately gets to Danny Santiago and knocks him down. And again, that's the first knockdown. Yep. And now the second knockdown. Languishing on the inside, still Tarver throwing lots of punches, and the body punches actually had a lot of impact on Santiago and uh, throwing hooks and uppercuts, and finally that would be the end for Santiago. Let me, let me ask you a question. The, the tar even though Tarver ended it emphatically here, the Tarver that we saw here tonight, how would he do against uh, Jeff Lacey, Chad Dawson, Glenn Johnson, people of that ilk? He wa I don't know that he was as sharp with his punches, but we often see him get off to a slow start. And so if you'd asked me that question in round five or six or seven, I might have a different answer. But at that moment, it was, it was a, I, I think, an uneven effort to that point. Okay. And we'll get the official time for our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 53 seconds in round number four. Our referee in charge, Steve Smoger, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout and still the IBO light heavyweight champion, the magic man, Antonio Tarver. So uh, Antonio Tarver, now 26 and four with 19 knockouts. Santiago 29, uh, four and one. All four of his losses by by knockout. Uh, not an overwhelmingly spectacular performance uh, by by Tarver. You heard the the smattering of boos even after the announcement was made that Tarver won a fourth round uh, technical uh, knockout. And you know, I'm just. Uh, you know, Chad Dawson watching this tonight has to be uh, somewhat salivating. Let's get it into the ring to Jim Gray. Steve, thank you very much with his wife, Denise, his daughter, Taylor. Antonio, congratulations to you. Thank you. Antonio, what are your thoughts of the crowd booing? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I really didn't hear the crowd. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, we came here, we executed, we did what we were supposed to do, got busy with the jab, you know, the fundamentals of the game. And uh, everything came together, you know. Danny came in here with a chance of a lifetime. He took some hard shots early. But, you know, we knew we had to break him down to the body and get him out of there. So we did just that. And uh, we on to the next stage. Did you feel at all tentative and slow? Not at all. Not at all. I felt good. I mean, uh, I'm a patient fighter. Everybody knows that. And uh, like I said, the only thing that matters is the end result. I'm not out here, you know, uh, trying to get outside of myself. I know my game. Uh, it's worked for me this long, and we're going to stick to it. But certainly guys like Santiago and Elver Mariki are not in your class, or at least they weren't in your class. So for this to go any time and Mariki to go any time doesn't demonstrate that really you're the same fighter that you've been in the past. Does that, well, does that concern you? Well, we'll determine that when we get some big names to step up and challenge me. That's what it's all about. Then you'll be able to see me, Jim. I mean, hey, uh, I came out here, we worked, and that's it. That was all I expected. I knocked the guy out. I mean, we'll see. Can any of the, the light heavyweights stand up to that power? Well, when will we see you? When will we see you with Chad Dawson or Johnson or, or, or those likes? That's up to them. I mean, Al Heyman, Heyman Entertainment, I told him, set them up, I'll knock them down. I mean, we ready. And, and no question about that. If anybody want to dispute who division this is, come see me. Is money going to be, obviously money's always an issue, but it, will it be an impediment to putting one of these fights together? Will you ask too much because it creates the There's impression that you don't want to fight them? There's never too much money when I lay my life on the line. You know, I don't know, how, I don't know what's your value, but... Uh, well, I'm not getting I've hit. I, I respect I've that. Earned I, I, I respect I've that. earned it. I respect that. I understand it. that. But Olympian, Olympian four-time uh, world champion, the legend killer. It goes on and on. Let's go to the other end of the equation, then, uh, because you understand it, Antonio. They say that you want too much money because you really don't want to fight them. There's never em. enough too much. I've never ducked anyone, Jim. Okay. You do my track record, man. I stand by my talents. Will they stand by theirs? I fight and they know that. Come on, man. I beat them all and I'll fight them all. So it looks, as though, you, you, you looks as though as if Jeff Lacey wins that fight, would that be your next opponent probably I mean, in April? That's a good match. Why wouldn't it be? Okay. Jeff Lacey is a big name. I mean, he's, he's only lost one. And maybe we can do some comparisons to the Jeff Lacey Tarver fight. And you can do the comparison against Cal Zaki and Lacey. And then, you know, we'll set up the big showdown after that. You said something really interesting before the fight to me. You said you thought that your best was yet to come. 
did we see a portion of that tonight? I mean, I, I think so. I, you saw combination punches. You saw my defense. I didn't get hit with anything. And uh, we stayed in there. When the guy wanted to fight, we fought inside. We worked our way out. And we put back. We got back on the jab. I'm back, man. It's, it's not never a question of that. Thank you for your time. Congratulations, you. Antonio. We'll yeah. see you next time. Campbell, Florida. I'm coming home, baby. Indeed you are. We'll see you then. Thank you. All right, back down to you, Steve. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, let's uh, check out how the scoring went for Tarver versus uh, Santiago. First, the official uh, judges' scorecards here at Foxwoods. At the time of the stoppage, uh, uh, Glenn Feldman, Mark Streisand, Peter Tremetera, also, also at the uh, same way, 30 to 27. Yeah, and of course, that la had the fight been continuing with the knockdowns, that next round would have been a 10-7 round for Tarver. And the uh, panel of Press row judges saw it this way. Uh, Ron Borges actually gave the first round 10-10. Is that what I'm understanding? Okay, interesting. And then Keith Eidek and Jack Obermeyer had it the way the official judges had it at the time of the stoppage. All right, uh, Al, as we uh, wrap things up from ringside, interested to get your final observations. How do you think uh, tonight's action will impact on 2008? Well, you know, we did see some fighters that we think are going to be a part of 2008. Nonito Donaire officially stamping himself as an absolutely fantastic flyweight, maybe super flyweight, maybe even a bantamweight. Can't wait to see him in big matches, maybe against Archinian. Vernon Forrest with a brilliant performance, and we hope we'll see him maybe against Mayorga. And clearly, Dawson looking toward a lacy matchup and possibly against a light heavyweight champ maybe like Dawson all three of them I think we would like to see more of in this uh, next year here's how tonight's triple header officially goes in the books in our opening bout the Filipino flash advances on Nonito Donaire retained his IBF flyweight belt a rematch with Victor Arginian would be very attractive in the co-main event Vernon Forrest still the WBC super welterweight champion did it in uh, lopsided fashion his first successful defense to the dismay of former welterweight champion Michele Picciarillo who may have broken his ankle at the end of the fight is Ricardo Mayorga next for Forrest and in our second co-main event no surprise is Antonio Tarver under sharp criticism following his last two performances beat relatively unknown Danny uh, Santiago for Al Bernstein, Jim Gray, and our entire crew, Steve Albert, saying so long and happy holidays. And as we close out our 2007 season, here are some memorable moments from this past year. The new WBC light heavyweight champion of the world, Chad Dawson. And you see the emotion overcome Chad Dawson. Nightmare. It's spectacular.